Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Onfra Pavarin and you might know me from my grand strategy channel here on YouTube. I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive to bring you a series of tutorial videos about Crusader Kings 3. Previously we talked about the success of your character and dynasty, but of course none of that means anything if your realm keeps having civil wars and splinters whenever your character dies. Today we'll check out how you can keep your realm together, even in death, by exploring the topic of succession. For this purpose, we're going to take a look at King Alfred II of England and how he has prepared his realm for his own demise. I'll be telling you about realm authority, realm succession laws and title succession laws. Let's start out by talking about realm authority. Realm authority is a topic that you will encounter with every single character you play. If you are a vassal, you want to keep it as low as possible and may conspire with fellow vassals in a liberty faction to lower realm authority and take away power right out of the lieges' hands. Decentralizing the realm is without a doubt in the interest of a vassal, however if you are the liege you want to take absolute control. High levels of realm authority allow you to imprison unruly vassals, revoke their titles and secure the spot on top of the food chain for generations to come by passing favorable succession laws. While this game of tug of war is already of incredible importance in feudal and clan based societies, it is even more vital for tribes. Only a tribal leader with complete control inside of their lands can take their people into a new future, meaning that decentralized tribes will stay behind and lose out. Alfred the Great was the first king of United England, but he did not trouble the realm with any attempt to centralize it by raising the crown's authority since he was more concerned with the Vikings' immediate threat. Since then, however, times have changed. The Vikings are long gone and his grandson, Alfred II, is a cruel and terrible ruler, as feared as his grandfather was loved. And as much as his vassals do not enjoy his existence, the realm has become more centralized and stable during his reign. It is however an unchangeable truth that Alfred II will not live forever, and the death of a monarch, especially one despised by his vassals, can sometimes be all that is needed to tear a realm apart. Let's take a thorough look at how realm succession laws work. Understanding them means to understand how to keep your realm from collapsing when the Grim Reaper comes knocking on your door. When your character dies, their titles are distributed, in principle, according to their realm succession law. This legal framework determines which gender is eligible to receive titles and it also determines how the titles are distributed between all those that are eligible. The succession law is split between a category that hands out your titles to multiple heirs, splintering your hard-earned lands, and a category that hands your titles out to only one sole heir. The succession laws that splinter your land between multiple heirs make it considerably harder to build a strong and stable realm. They are, however, also the traditional form of inheritance in most corners of the medieval world. To change your succession law into the direction of having one sole heir means to change the culture and tradition of you and your people. In practice, this means that certain succession laws require cultural innovations to unlock them. Additionally, no powerful vassal of yours may reject your law change proposal. To enact single heir succession laws, you must also have centralized your realm and achieved high crown authority. That, of course, is quite a distant dream for King Alfred II. Since the Anglo-Saxon culture still clings to the old idea of giving every son an equal piece of the cake, this succession law is the most basic one and it is called Confederate Partition and it will make sure that your realm splinters. Confederate Partition creates titles of the same level as your highest title, so a kingdom tier title in Alfred's case, if you hold enough land in areas outside of what belongs to your actual title. In this case, his two younger sons will name themselves the Kings of Wales and Ireland, becoming independent from their brother and your primary heir. The splintering of his realm is a nightmare to Alfred, and so he has worked tirelessly to advance his culture and convince his vassals. He has changed the succession law of his realm to simple partition. This way, his primary son still has to cede some land to his brothers, but the realm stays together. Nobody becomes King of Ireland or Wales, and England rules supreme. It should be pointed out that some regions and cultures are open to specific succession laws on the title law and the realm law level. Bohemians, for example, traditionally followed house seniority instead of partition. Your experience and options will differ across the map and time periods. The laws of the realm generally describe how all of your titles are distributed after your demise, but there is an additional layer to this, title succession laws. Titles of the duchy, kingdom and empire levels can be given specific gender or distribution laws that only apply to this very title and override your general realm laws. Alfred, for example, is part of the Anglo-Saxon culture and it is tradition that the rulers of the Anglo-Saxons are determined by a body of nobles, the Witten. This means that while according to the laws of the realm it would be his firstborn son that is entitled to the Anglo-Saxon crown, the Witten could, if applied as a title succession law, with or against Alfred, elect a future ruler of England that commonly would have no right to inherit. Alfred believes his firstborn son to be weak and instead gets the Witten to vote for his secondborn. Just keep the following in mind. Excluding or taking away any of your eligible children from their rightful inheritance can breed resentment for, after all, they do have a right to your lands. 
Thank you for tuning in to today's CK3 tutorial about succession. Next time we'll take a look at schemes and how you can make friends, enemies and much much more. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the next tutorial video. For now, later, alligator. <laughs>